And with today's speaker, I'd like to remind you that the Institute on World Affairs is a, an activity open to the entire ISU community. If you're here, you're part of that community, and we welcome your participation. We'll begin meeting Monday after next at 4 o'clock in the Pine Room. We'll talk over this week for a few minutes, and then we'll start arguing about what we'll choose for next year. We try to choose the most important topic in the world. And then we go out looking for the most important people we can, uh, the most interesting, the most knowledgeable, those that can tell us the most to understand that topic better. And if you're at all interested, or there's someone somewhere in the world you'd like to have come here and have this university here, uh, come get involved in the Institute, uh, take in part in the discussion, and you can play a part in the way this works out next year. So please think about that. Welcome to uh, this noon's lecture. Um, before we, I introduce our speaker, I'd like to bring to your attention that tonight, Jane Cortez is going to be giving a lecture in the sunroom on economy, ecology, and poetry. And then tomorrow at noon, here in the Pioneer Room, we have a, a Pamela Spar speaking on engendering change, women in the new world order. Today's speaker, Mitsuyu Goto, um, served in executive positions in Europe and Japan with the Nissan Motor Company before forming his own international consulting firm for the auto industry. While with Nissan, he was in charge of the international affairs and he also worked in Europe when Nissan opened its early plants in the UK. He's a graduate of Wabash College in Indiana and he did his graduate work at Princeton's Woodrow Wilson School of Public and International Affairs. He was managing director for the Japan Center for International Exchange and is author of Speaking Out for Japan, my Discipline in Internationalism. He's on the Board of Advisors for the Belgian Business School, a member of the Council of London's Policy Study Institute, and a recipi recipient of the Benjamin Rush Award for Humanistic Values in Corporate Life. I introduce Mitsuyu Goto on U.S.-Japanese relations. Are we on a collision course? Thank you, Jeff, <coughs> for your generous introduction. Uh, my last name, Goto, is spelled G-O-T-O. -O. And when I went to Wabash College <coughs> uh, years and years ago, some of my classmates would call me uh, Goat, <coughs> or High Goat, or even call me High Billy Goat. So uh, around 1974, in the wake of <coughs> uh, first energy crisis, Japanese cars started selling like hotcakes in America <coughs> and touched off a small small car war, a term that the Japanese mass media coined. And I, <coughs> I, I, I thought my nickname should be Scape, as in scapegoat. <laughs> so if you like to call me uh, Scape, uh, I'd be very happy. In fact, my nickname was written up on the front page of Wall Street Journal in February 1975. So. I'm very pleased <laughs> to be uh, on the campus of Iowa State University today. I feel honored to be invite, invited <laughs> by the Institute on World Affairs uh, to speak to you today, especially the day after the important presidential election. I don't know why you chose this particular date for me to, to speak, but I'm delighted, <laughs> feel honored to be here today. Uh, I uh, <coughs> uh, see sometimes there are two kinds of dreams that I, I see, and not that I, I see dreams that often. One dream that I sometimes see <coughs> is myself walking up to a podium like this, facing an American audience such as <coughs> yours, unable to utter a single word of English. You see, I did not speak a word of English until I was about 17 or 18. So sometimes I see this kind of dream <coughs> and wake up and having really cold feet. <coughs> um, <coughs> the other, uh, and then, and then I'm also reminded of a young Japanese boy, uh, <coughs> someone like me who uh, came to this country to study. His Japanese, his English was so poor that whenever he wanted to say something, he had to look up words in his pocket uh, Japanese English dictionary. 
One day he was invited to a party where he was introduced a pretty American girl. So he quickly looked up his dictionary and said, you have a beautiful hide, H-I-D-E. <coughs> you see, in, in uh, Japanese, there are uh, one or possibly two words which would describe outer coverings of anything, but in English you say, uh, strange enough, uh, human beings and pigs have skin, and uh, horses and cows have hide on them. Tree has a bark, orange has a rind, bananas a peel, and, and peas have paws on them. <coughs> and and uh, of course, uh, I've known that, that uh, there are some nuts in this country uh, which have not shells on them, but uh, skin on, on them also. <laughs> but uh, uh, his friend immediately noticed it, American friend said to him, no, no, young man, you should have used the word skin in a case like that. Complexion would be too much for him. So <clears throat> next Sunday, following Sunday, he goes to a local church where the congregation was singing to him, hide me, hide me, O oh my Savior. So he started singing, scheme me, scheme me, O oh my Savior. <laughs> Actually, the other <coughs> kind of dream that uh, I sometimes see is the sky filled with Boeing B-29 bombers that <coughs> used to come drop bombs over us in the last years of the war. And, and uh, I was <coughs> then uh, uh, attending a boarding school on the outskirts of Tokyo, but <coughs> uh, in the last year of the war, all of us students who mobilized for war effort, we had to work in the nearby uh, Nakajima aircraft engine factory, operating lathe and things like that. <coughs> and, and that became the first target of the B-29 bombers uh, based in Marianas in November 1944. And the first wave of B-29s came in high altitude and since from my childhood, I was always interested in airplanes and cars, I disregarded the order to stay in the air raid shelter and <coughs> watch these uh, B-29s uh, come on high altitude in broad daylight and uh, their bomb base open and bombs coming down. And uh, fortunately, the plant went up in smoke, but uh, nobody was injured. And I, and I remember seeing Japanese anti-aircraft guns being, being shot, <clears throat> but the, the B-29s came in such high altitude that uh, the, uh, the guns could not get to them. But I, I do remember seeing a Japanese uh, fighter plane, kamikaze style, uh, crash into one of the B-29s and the both planes coming down. Uh, this was the first time I got, to, we uh, Japanese got to see what the B-29 looked like because there had been no published picture of the aircraft uh, in the newspaper or magazines. And uh, <clears throat> I was really fascinated with these uh, uh, long-range <laughs> bombers. Now, after the Nakajima aircraft uh, plant went up in smoke, I then returned to my hometown, which is Nagoya, a big industrial city between Tokyo and uh, Osaka, or for that matter, between uh, Kyoto and uh, uh, Tokyo. And uh, my, my, my father <coughs> said to me that perhaps B-29s will st start coming to Nagoya also, because Nagoya was the home of Mitsubishi aircraft, which used to produce famous uh, Zero fighters. And sure enough, in March of 1945, B-29 started coming, dropping bombs over us. But sometimes they would come <coughs> uh, uh, nighttime. And, and if you uh, hear <coughs> the engine, you know, each plane having four engines, and there are normally about five, three to 500 B-29s in, in the air. The engine noise alone had devastating psychological effect on us down, down below. And then <laughs> we'll cringe in the area shelter and we, we soon hear bombs exploding nearby. 
uh, and then on, on May uh, 17th, 1945, three months before war came to an end, my parental home, which was a big <coughs> Japanese-style home in Nagoya, uh, uh, went up in smoke. After 513 B-29s in a particular raid dropped incendiary bombs uh, in, 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 in Nagoya. And uh, I remember standing on the smoldering ruins of my parental home, saying to myself, my God, what have we done? <clears throat> and, and it made me wonder why the Japanese army generals, uh, Tojo was the <clears throat> prime minister, army general, who uh, attacked Pearl Harbor in the first place. And I uh, wondered why, why <clears throat> uh, Japan ever declared war against the United States. I was really mad at the Japanese army generals who started this last war. <clears throat> and uh, also wondered if they had maintained a good dialogue with President of the United States, Secretary of State, perhaps war could have been avoided. Or if they had much better understanding of the great expanse of America, especially the Midwestern part of the United States, and your industrial capability, <clears throat> I think war could not, uh, could not have happened. And so when the war came to an end, and then uh, <clears throat> after I graduated from this boarding school, senior high school, I decided that I would not want to go on to college in Japan, but rather I would uh, grab first opportunity offered to me to come to the United States to, to continue my studies. And, and, uh, but I said to myself, first, you have to study the language. So I, <clears throat> during the day, I worked on my father's farm just outside of Nagoya. And my father, being absentee landlord, land would have been taken away by uh, tenants if I did not work on my father's farm under MacArthur's new agricultural uh, policy. Uh, and so during the day, I <clears throat> worked on my father's farm. By night, I would listen to the armed forces radio. Japan was still under the Allied occupation and, and uh, listen to especially newscasts. And then imitating the radio announcer who was normally a GI, I would read aloud the only English language newspaper published then, the Japan Times, trying to memorize phrases, words, and sentences. <clears throat> and when I became reasonably proficient in the language in about a year and a half, I then decided to go work for the local U.S. military government uh, in, in Nagoya. Uh, where my, a lot of my f American friends would write <coughs> to their own colleges and universities and, and, and to see if they had scholarship available for me, but uh, in vain. I was also working with a young American in mid-30s, uh, a civilian employee uh, from Ladoga, Indiana, a tiny town of <coughs> 500 people. Even people in Indiana don't, don't know where Ladoga is. But anyway, um, one day this fellow <coughs> became seriously ill. He had bulbar type polio that affected his neck. He had a hard time breathing. <coughs> and uh, he was taken to, flown to uh, US military hospital in Osaka and remained in an oxygen tent for 10 days, but died there <coughs> uh, 10 days later. Uh, it just so happened that a few days he was stricken. I had taken his picture in the office. And when I wrote a letter of condolence to his mother back home in Indiana, I thought she would like to have his picture, so I enclosed it. And, and toward the end of my letter, I said, someday I would very much like to, to come to your country to continue my education. <clears throat> and she was evidently had heard about me from her son. And uh, she was good enough to drive to uh, Crawfordsville, Indiana, which is about uh, 13, 14 miles from Ladoga. And she talked to the admissions director at Wabash College. And eventually, Wabash College gave me a scholarship. <clears throat> so 
only because her son, her son did not make it back to uh, Indiana, I was able to come. And, uh, I, <coughs> and I had four years of wonderful education uh, in the heart of the Midwest. So I became a kind of a Japanese Hoosier. <coughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then I, I also received a fellowship to do graduate work at uh, Princeton's uh, Woodrow Wilson School of Public and International Affairs. <coughs> so I've had, education-wise, best of both worlds. And I'll be forever grateful to my American friends who made it possible for me to come to the United States in the first place. Now today, I'm supposed to be talking about uh, <coughs> U.S.-Japan relations, whether we are on a collision, collision course. Uh, my <coughs> thoughts always uh, go back to January of this year when uh, President uh, George Bush evidently was persuaded by then Commerce Secretary Bob Mossbacher to bring 21 uh, U U.S. business leaders in the auto sector. <coughs> and uh, I personally have had very good uh, relations with the uh, chairman of the big three, threes of Detroit, uh, Lee Iacocca. Uh, he also had done graduate work in engineering at Princeton, <coughs> and uh, I got to know him very well. And he was president of Ford Motor Company. And then uh, uh, Red Pauling, <coughs> chairman of Ford, and uh, Bob Stemple, of course, he had to step down just a few days ago. but. Uh, uh, Actually, uh, one of the <coughs> Japanese uh, uh, automakers <coughs> uh, said at the time that when there are so many of us, we cannot possibly have meaningful discussion, you know. And uh, in fact, in, in advance of their visit, <coughs> both American and Japanese government negotiators uh, negotiated a sort of a uh, auto par parts purchase <coughs> uh, plans. And uh, I think uh, on a voluntary basis, uh, Japanese automakers now made commitments to buy as much as $19 billion worth of auto parts from U.S. suppliers uh, by 1994. But <coughs> already there, there had been so much goodwill on the part of Japanese automakers, uh, also on the part of our government, to want to buy more from the United States. And uh, actually, <coughs> since becoming independent uh, international consultant, I've been retained by chairman of the Timken Company, which is the biggest uh, bearings manufacturer in the United States and also by chairman of Arvin Industries in Columbus, uh, Indiana, which is the U.S. biggest uh, auto exhaust system <coughs> manufacturer, along with uh, shock absorbers. And, and uh, uh, their chairman also asked to, to come to Japan with the president, but turned the president down in saying they do not want to be politicized. Uh, I'm also reminded <coughs> of the, uh, I mean, as a, as a result, the auto issue was really highlighted, <coughs> you know, uh, because of uh, President Bush's visit to Japan. I'm reminded of the story of a Chrysler dealer somewhere, small town, USA, <coughs> and, and uh, the story that uh, Lester Stroh, who is dean of the Sloan School of Management at MIT, personally told me. Now, this was the Chrysler dealer <coughs> uh, in, the, in, the, in the days when Chrysler Corporation was having grave financial difficulties. And the dealer uh, uh, <coughs> found it very difficult to move Chrysler cars from his showroom floor. And he became more and more depressed. So he took to alcohol. And eventually, his wife and children left him. One evening, he was nursing a bottle with his shaky hands. 
and suddenly out came smoke, and with it, a genie. Now, Janie said to him, thank you for having gotten me out of this bottle. <coughs> In gratitude, I'd like to grant your, your last wish. <coughs> so the Chrysler dealer, dealer says, get me an import dealership. <coughs> when the smoke cleared and the genie disappeared, the Chrysler dealer found himself in the middle of Tokyo selling Chrysler cars. <laughs> Actually, <clears throat> the Wall Street Journal had an editorial uh, in January that said Japan should have kept uh, Lee Iacocca in Japan so that he would be directing sales of uh, Chrysler cars in, 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 in Japan. Uh, you know, um, <clears throat> actually I felt this would be a golden opportunity for our Prime Minister Miyazawa <clears throat> first Japanese Prime Minister who is very international minded and also who is <clears throat> able to speak English uh, fluently. I thought maybe by getting together with the President of the United States, they can discuss broader issues, <clears throat> uh, global issues, where Japan and the United States could possibly collaborate. But instead, <clears throat> uh, uh, if you recall, at the dinner <coughs> hosted by our Prime Minister, uh, President Bush uh, threw up, and uh, that was very unfortunate. He was probably very tired after a grueling trip to Australia and other parts of Asia. <coughs> and uh, uh, so they did not get to discuss uh, more important uh, issues of, of the day. Uh, Uh, maybe uh, this being the day after the presidential election, I should be talking about uh, about uh, Texas businessman Ross Perot. But <clears throat> remember T. Boone Pickens, the famous Texas oil man, uh, started coming to Japan like a couple of years ago, in saying that uh, now that his company had had 26% uh, of the Japanese uh, lighting, headlight <coughs> manufacturer uh, called Koito Manufacturing, that three of his men be placed on the Japanese company's board, and the Japanese company also increased dividend payouts. And he kept coming back <coughs> to Japan. But over the years, uh, I, I got to meet him and see him and I began to like this man. He, he one day gave me his autobiography <coughs> and autograph. And in reading his autobiography, I admired the way he managed his own company, how he treated everyone <coughs> in his company, you know, just like the Japanese, Japanese company. You know, there's no distinction between blue color and uh, white color, etc. But, <coughs> uh, he also told me a story of two American women walking down one of the fashionable streets downtown Houston one day when they heard a frog, or found a frog in the gutter. <clears throat> the frog started talking to them in saying that I used to be an oil man, but the spell was cast, I became a frog. Now, if one of you were to pick me up and kiss me, I'd be able to turn back into an oil man. So one of the women picked him up, <clears throat> and instead of kissing him, she put him in her purse, and they continued down the street. After a while, this other woman got concerned and said to the other, why didn't you kiss him? And the other woman said, Nowadays, a talking frog is worth more than an oil man. <laughs> but <clears throat> as you know, he was not successful in taking over a Japanese company, and he often appeared before congressional uh, committees <clears throat> in saying that the Japanese companies are not uh, open to foreign investors, etc. <clears throat> also, beginning January of 1990, <clears throat> Japanese government 
and the, uh, the U.S. Uh, negotiators began a series of negotiations that were called SII, <coughs> which means uh, Structural Impediment Initiative, almost sounds like a Star War Initiative or something. And the uh, U.S. side came up with as many as 75 different demands, ranging from uh, Japan <coughs> uh, start buying American rice, Japan opened up its market to big toy stores such as Tor, tor I, I can never pronounce that word, Toys, toys Are Us, <laughs> that's a jawbreaker, and, 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 uh, <coughs> and down to uh, we Japanese stop being workaholics and take more paid holidays. And, and uh, also knowing that uh, we have a uh, pension for personal savings. On the average, we save uh, 16, 15 to 16 percent of our an annual income <coughs> into put, put that into a personal savings account uh, as against your five to six percent. So American trade negotiators who come to Japan say to us, <coughs> you know, you become spendthrift and buy more from America, etc. So I, I was beginning to feel that now, wait a minute, you are getting into our, our domestic, you know, meddling in, in, <coughs> in our domestic affairs. But even the poll conducted by a Japanese newspaper in, I believe, in April of 1990, <coughs> uh, some 40% of Japanese poll felt that uh, some of the U.S. demands are justifiable. 60% uh, of Japanese poll also felt that the Japan ought to <coughs> start buying American rice bit by bit. Uh, because food stuff in Japan tends to be very expensive uh, compared to <coughs> the food prices here in the United States. Um, and then the Japanese side, uh, not to be, to, to be outdone, for the first time came up with a dozen demands <coughs> to, toward, to the United States. Uh, of course, the Japanese negotiators would say that the uh, U.S. <coughs> really ought, ought to put its economic house in order by reducing federal, huge <coughs> uh, federal budget deficit. Uh, reduce uh, trade deficit with Japan, and you will encourage your industries to become more productive, improve productivity and competitiveness, etc. <coughs> uh, again, I'm reminded of the story of the admiral of the fleet, uh, which was told by Marvin Runyon, whom uh, Nissan moved away from Ford Motor Company to run Nissan's manufacturing operation in Tennessee. In fact, I was, <coughs> while at uh, Nissan Motor Company, I was in charge of U.S. investment project also. And uh, uh, this, this story of the Admiral Fleet <coughs> is uh, one day an ensign uh, on, on his flagship was watching the ship's radar screen and he saw a small blip. So he shouted, <coughs> we are on a collision course. You change course. And the voice would come back and say, you change course. And you change course. And, and they were getting nowhere. Finally, the, this ensign reports this back to the admiral. Now, admiral of the fleet now had a microphone in his hand. He said, <coughs> this is the admiral of the fleet, whoever you are change course. And the voice came back and saying, God damn it, I'm the lighthouse, you change course. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I think U.S. negotiators uh, know that the we Japanese are very susceptible to external pressure. We would, we would do something, you know, we will always react <coughs> to external pressure. And uh, so they have always used kind of a 
harsh tactics, harsh rhetoric to get us to do something. Uh, actually, <coughs> uh, caving in, well, not exactly caving into pressure, but uh, uh, beginning about five, six years ago, we have not been noticing proliferation of fat U.S. fast food chains in, in, in Japan. <clears throat> First was, of course, the McDonald's hamburger joint, and then Colonel Sanders' fried chicken came, <clears throat> and then uh, Denny's came, uh, Baskin Robin ice cream joint came, uh, Taco Bell and uh, Pizza Hut. Everybody is now in Japan, <clears throat> and finally, uh, 7-Eleven stores came in in joint venture partnership with a Japanese retail chain called Ito Yokado. <clears throat> and uh, there are now more than 4,000 outlets uh, throughout Japan. And, and they are doing very good business. They have very good market research program. <clears throat> and the, the merchandise on, on their shelves are changed so often to meet the demanding taste of Japanese. And, and uh, actually, <coughs> uh, uh, parent company Southland Corporation in Texas uh, began to have financial problems. And the Japanese side en en ended up going to the rescue of Southland Corporation. And Southland, I mean, the Japanese <coughs> Ito Yokado now has, I believe, something like 60% equity in Southland Corporation. And, uh, <coughs> I think this is a very good example of joint venture between American company and a Japanese company doing so well in Japan. Now, the Japanese populace <coughs> is bombarded with what you Americans call junk food, but we don't call it that. <laughs> our, our youngsters really like uh, your uh, fast food uh, uh, restaurants. <coughs> and uh, it's very hard for me to keep my daughters from uh, selling not uh, uh, Baskin Robin ice cream joints, for example. Uh, at any rate, we are beginning to see obese <coughs> children because of uh, changing <laughs> food habits. And, and, uh, and uh, uh, I'm afraid <coughs> uh, the, the rate of heart attack among older, older people is on the increase because we uh, we buy no nowadays uh, as much as 73% of your beef <coughs> export. Can you imagine this? You know, uh, sometimes uh, <coughs> uh, Senator ba Max Baucus in, in Montana and other senators or congressmen would say to us, uh, you must buy more American beef. And now we ended up buying as much as 73% of your beef export. I know the United States, for example, restrict the import of inexpensive beef from Argentina or Australia. But we ended up buying so much American beef. Uh, we also buy <coughs> nowadays something like 68% of your pork export, and m much of which both beef and pork come from uh, Iowa. In fact, <clears throat> between Iowa and Japan, uh, uh, Iowa has trade surplus uh, with Japan. I was this morning, I was just talking with Lieutenant Governor Joy Corning <coughs> um, in Des Moines, and I, I saw, got to see her in Tokyo in June of this year. She was just saying that, <coughs> and that's really amazing. And, and and we also buy 51% uh, of U.S. citrus exports. So our warehouses are now bulging with uh, grapefruits and oranges from the United States. And my family, for example, can enjoy grapefruit halves for breakfast every morning. Prices have come down, which is a very good thing. Uh, <coughs> we also buy uh, about 31% uh, of your chicken export and about 25% uh, <coughs> of soybean export. 
uh, corn export, feedstock uh, export, and, and uh, sorghum also, I think, and uh, leaf tobacco. So we last year ended, ended up buying as much as 81, uh, no, 8.1 billion dollars worth of agricultural products from the United States. So we are uh, United States' <coughs> best agricultural customer. Now, Japanese industries also have been <coughs> bending backwards, or Japanese government uh, or government on universities also bending backwards to buy more and more from the United States. Uh, some seven years ago, uh, <coughs> the manufactured goods uh, imported from the United States accounted for only 30 percent <coughs> of imports from the United States. But last year, uh, we the in imports <coughs> from the United States totaled uh, like 53 billion dollars. But 63 percent of which were in manufactured goods, such as uh, uh, satellite. Uh, <coughs> space satellites, communications equipment, computers, a uh, hundred million dollars worth of American movies, and American movies are very popular in Japan, <coughs> um, and we are also buying, we like uh, new Cadillac Seville, and which is becoming very popular in Japan. Uh, Japanese youngsters like uh, Ralph, Ralph Lauren, <coughs> uh, you know, outfits, and uh, there are also Brooks Brothers stores uh, in Japan now. And uh, so we, we, it's not that uh, we do not like to buy anything from America, as some of you are led to believe, but uh, we really like uh, uh, things American still. <coughs> and uh, I hope uh, more American companies would, would bend backwards to study the Japanese market and export their products to Japan. Actually, <coughs> the Japanese today uh, imports uh, more on a per capita basis. <coughs> uh, per capita uh, uh, dollar figure is something like 800, uh, no, excuse me, $387 <coughs> worth of uh, uh, U.S. products as ver versus uh, on per capita basis, you Americans have been buying uh, about three hundred fifty-seven dollars worth of Japanese goods. So that is where we now stand. Uh, <coughs> speaking of Iowa Japan uh, relations. In addition to to uh, <coughs> to your exports, uh, Japanese companies have come <coughs> to Iowa to invest. Uh, NSK, the Japanese bearings company, has a plant here. Uh, Bridge Bridgestone also invested here in Iowa. That's a tire company, and Ajinomoto, which is uh, <coughs> you know the company that makes uh, seasoning called Accent. Uh, has a plant here in, in uh, Iowa. <coughs> uh, Sumitomo Chemical also has come. And uh, Honda uh, Parts Distribution Facility is here in, in Iowa. And Toyota Insurance Company of North America has just decided to locate its head office in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So <coughs> more and more Japanese companies are also finding uh, Iowa their American home, homes. In fact, uh, <coughs> uh, I was in, when I was introduced, uh, I used to be for a long time with Nissan Motor Company, which is a tiny, struggling Japanese automaker, and and I <coughs> was also also I also spearheaded Nissan's drive to invest here in North America, and. Uh, we began our feasibility studies as far back as 1974, and 
<coughs> and the final decision to, to invest in Smyrna, Tennessee, was made uh, in time for the presidential election of 1980. You know, it was a toss-up between Jimmy Carter's re-election <coughs> and, 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 uh, or uh, Ronald Reagan. And uh, in the end, I was negotiating with uh, governors of Tennessee and uh, Georgia. <coughs> Georgia governor was Democratic governor, George Busby. And uh, I, I played them against each other to get a better deal. And finally, <coughs> finally, we decided, Nissan decided to go to Tennessee because Lamar Alexander, among other things, moved state legislature to vote as much as $7.2 million for training <coughs> our future employees. And Nissan uh, itself matched <coughs> uh, with uh, setting aside as much as $52 million for training our people. And, that's <coughs> and then to date, uh, Nissan increased that amount by, by, by I mean, <coughs> double that amount. So, and to date, uh, today, Nissan in Tennessee employs uh, over 6,000 people. Uh, and Nissan also decided to build an engine plant in <coughs> Decker, uh, Tennessee. But uh, of the 6,000 people, uh, over 1,000 people, when they were newly hired, <coughs> managers inclusive, were sent to Japan jointly by the state of Tennessee and Nissan, and, and uh, uh, so that uh, <coughs> you know, in groups of maybe 30, and uh, so that they can receive on-the-job training, uh, lasting like uh, six weeks in Japan, and they will have orientation program uh, <coughs> for Japanese lifestyles also, and uh, whatever they they garner, <coughs> uh, they will bring back to Tennessee. And by having the best of both worlds, they have been producing real high quality <coughs> vehicles uh, in Smyrna, Tennessee. And, and uh, I, for one, am very happy that uh, Nissan <coughs> made their home in the United States in Tennessee. Now, the man who was named the first president, chief executive officer, Marvin Runyon's name I already mentioned, he was <coughs> vice president body and assembly of Ford Motor Company, but he did such a good job <coughs> that uh, uh, he used to say the people are the greatest asset we have, including our stakeholders. <coughs> uh, and uh, he did such a good job that uh, uh, President Reagan tapped him to be chairman of the travel TVA. Uh, uh, about a year ago, President Bush uh, asked him to become Postmaster General, where I think he's doing a very good job <coughs> in, uh, uh, in, you know, post, post <coughs> U.S. Postal, postal Service has had uh, some problems, and uh, I think <coughs> Marvin Runyon is a good job as Postmaster General today. Uh, before I conclude, <coughs> I just want to say that uh, over the years, in the last, say, two decades, uh, United States, the United States and Japan have become so mutually interdependent. <coughs> Our economies, uh, we have been bound by mutual security pact also. Uh, and culturally also, there's so much going on, even between <coughs> Uh, educational institutions in uh, Iowa <coughs> uh, and the Japanese educational institutions. Uh, and, and then State of Iowa has had a long-standing uh, association with the Amanashi Prefecture, which <coughs> where Mount Fuji is located. I was told that uh, in 1960, when the Yamanashi Prefecture hit by a terrible typhoon, uh, pigs <coughs> were sent by generous people here in Iowa, and that was the beginning of Iowa and uh, Yamanashi Prefecture <coughs> uh, 
sister state or sister prefecture ties. And again, I'm very grateful to the Iowa people for having sent uh, <coughs> relief goods to Yamanashi prefecture. I think Japan <coughs> probably needs America uh, more than America would need Japan. Mike Mansfield, who was <coughs> long ago Senate Majority Leader uh, <coughs> from Montana, uh, was American ambassador to Japan uh, during the Carter administration and uh, also through the Reagan administration. He's, he's Democrat, but uh, he did such a good job in Japan that uh, <coughs> uh, President Reagan reappointed him as ambassador to Japan. He used to say, <coughs> the next generation, next century is the century of the Pacific. And that's where the action is going to be, and that's where the growth is foreseen. Uh, also, there's no more important <coughs> bilateral relationship between that, <coughs> that between Japan and the United States, barring none. And I, I fully concur. Japan also <coughs> needs to play a bigger uh, political, uh, international role. And, and uh, <coughs> of course, uh, as you have heard, a uh, prime minister's leadership role, Miyazawa's <coughs> leadership role has been uh, debilitated by the uh, political party uh, scandal involving political contributions, <coughs> kind of illegal. Uh, uh, there is an intra-factional uh, dispute as, as to who should be the faction leader, uh, who is <coughs> likely to be our next uh, prime minister. But uh, at any rate, uh, because of Kanamara's position, I think uh, Miyazawa, our prime minister, has been uh, keeping his mouth shut about his, his own involvement. <coughs> and uh, I think it has really debilitated his uh, leadership uh, uh, role. In fact, his popularity rate is now down to 20%. So that's the kind of leadership problem that uh, we are having. Now, until <coughs> about uh, November of last year, for four years, I was on loan from Nissan Motor Company to a nonprofit organization called Japan Center for International Exchange as managing director. Now, one of the, <coughs> the major objectives of this organization was <coughs> uh, not only uh, annual congressional and parliamentary exchange program that we had <coughs> in the last uh, 15, 16 years. In fact, uh, uh, when uh, Dan Quayle <coughs> was freshman congressman from Indiana. He and his wife, uh, Marilyn, were brought over to Japan. <coughs> and I, I was, since I'm a Wabash graduate and DePaul University is the Wabash <coughs> arch rival, I was asked to take them out for first for breakfast, then uh, dinner. <coughs> so ever since I got to know them very, very well. Now, same way with uh, Al Gore. <coughs> junior, and uh, when he was a freshman congressman from Tennessee, uh, he and Tipper were brought over to Japan, and and I took I remember taking them out for dinner, <coughs> and uh, I've maintained very close contact with Al Gore Jr. and Tipper since. Uh, then uh, Japan Center <coughs> for International Exchange would also organize major. U.S.-Japan dialogue, which is called Shimoda Conference, which will bring together your political leaders, business leaders, and academics <coughs> to uh, always policy-oriented uh, discussions. Uh, we were also <coughs> Japan Committee for the Trilateral Commission, which is the brainchild of David Rockefeller. <coughs> and uh, annually, this Trilateral Commission meet uh, uh, once a year, North America, uh, Japan, and Europe, <coughs> uh, and, and uh, uh, 
we used to organize policy-oriented discussions. But, but <coughs> uh, the major objectives of the Japan Center in the last few years had been to encourage or educate Japanese political leaders and business leaders <coughs> that Japan really need to be play a bigger political role in the community of nations. <coughs> I don't know how, how, how much we've been successful. Uh, at least <coughs> I think Japanese business leaders uh, also being, uh, I mean, we also try to enlighten Japanese business leaders in the American co concept of corporate philanthropy getting involved with community affairs. <coughs> and an uh, increasing number of Japanese businessmen who are based in this country are uh, nowadays encouraged to get involved with community affairs <coughs> when invited to speak at the local Rotary Club luncheon or something. They are encouraged to speak. <coughs> um, you have, uh, but I don't think Japan could ever play <coughs> the kind of uh, uh, moral broker or world's policeman's <coughs> role of which the American president or secretary of state uh, have played. <coughs> so uh, I hope now that you have elected <coughs> Bill Clinton as the next president, I hope uh, your president <coughs> not only can uh, redress some of your domestic <coughs> issues, your economy and uh, uh, jobs <coughs> and, uh, uh, and, and other domestic issues. But <coughs> I hope that uh, he'll be uh, a very good international, <coughs> international, I mean, president for, for, the, rest of, for the rest of the world also. Uh, Bob Strauss, <coughs> whom I have known for a long time, is currently your ambassador to Russia, <coughs> who said <coughs> uh, several years ago, let us build upon a common vision <coughs> so that uh, the United States and Japan can stand together as we approach the new frontiers of the 21st century. And I feel the same way. So thank you very much. Actually, uh, not very many of us <coughs> happen to, to know Bill Clinton that well. Uh, although a lot of Japanese business <coughs> leaders have been uh, coming to the uh, either uh, Japan, U.S., Southeast Association meeting uh, at which <coughs> governors of uh, all uh, seven Southeastern states bring a big number of business, state business delegation to this annual conference. But uh, Arkansas has never been part of this uh, conference. <coughs> so uh, I, I have known uh, governors of all these seven Southeastern states uh, very, very well, some, some past governors. But uh, none of us <coughs> really have met uh, uh, Bill Clinton, although he's been to Japan three times to to invite Japanese companies to come and invest in Arkansas, and uh, I think <coughs> four or five Japanese companies have invested in Arkansas. But he internationally he is still kind of <coughs> unknown figure. Uh, evidently, he had done <coughs> very well. He has done very well as governor of Arkansas. And uh, of course, he, he was educated <coughs> at Oxford as a Rhodes Scholar. And uh, I hope uh, somebody who is really qualified will be appointed your know, Secretary of State. <coughs> and uh, maybe somebody like uh, Warren Christopher's name has been, has been <coughs> mentioned. And 
I also uh, feel that, uh, you know, in one of the presidential candidates' uh, debates, <coughs> he, he said that uh, in order to increase the tax base, he's going to tax anyone making over $200,000 a year. And also, he said, foreign companies investing here in this country. I hope, I hope he will not treat the foreign companies differently from U.S. companies because I, for one, feel that, uh, <coughs> for example, Nissan, my former company, which has invested <coughs> so heavily in the United States, we consider that company to be an American company, no longer. You know, it's headed by an American, and there are only few, maybe less than 10 Japanese in Tennessee. <coughs> so uh, I hope uh, Japanese companies that have, there are about 1,400 Japanese companies that have invested throughout the United States for manufacturing. I hope, <coughs> I hope uh, they are not subject to different rates of tax, for example. I, <coughs> I really do not think so. Of course, in Japan, as you know, uh, our economy <coughs> is, is uh, nowadays suffering. We say in Japan, uh, bubbles also have burst, and our stock market has been very depressed. Real estate values have started going down for the first time. So <coughs> our economies are not doing, I mean, Japanese companies are not doing very well either. You know, you know, when American multinational corporations <coughs> invest uh, overseas, uh, of course, <coughs> they tend to create uh, more jobs overseas also. But <coughs> uh, I think the statistics show that uh, that will also create more job opportunities here in America also, because uh, your companies here will have to produce certain componentry or something for overseas assembly, uh, things of this kind. Would you address the subject of, of uh, materials that are exported from the United States, so, so much of it is basic raw material without any value added? I'm thinking when I see these huge uh, ships, cargo ships with raw raw going to Japan with no value added. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, sure. Actually, my <coughs> primary concern or the concern of <coughs> business lead, Japanese business leaders such as Mr. Morita of Sony is the content of U.S.-Japan trade. You know, uh, I, I, I hope <coughs> my, my sincerest wish is that uh, more American companies uh, would be able to export to Japan more of high value added things <coughs> rather than raw materials and parts and components kind of things. Uh, but looking at the recent uh, U.S.-Japan trade, U.S. companies tended to buy even machine tools from, the United, from, J from Japan. <coughs> and machine tool industry in the United States used to be world's number one. Huh? Why, over the years, I think <coughs> they lost out to foreign competition, I, I just do not know. In much the same way, your, much of your st steel mills. <coughs> uh, in fact, my, uh, I'm an advisor to the Timken Company, but Timken Company built a new steel mill in Canton, Ohio <coughs> uh, in 1983 with technologies from uh, two Japanese mills. And that <coughs> uh, mill produces the cleanest steel in, in, in the United States. And for the inauguration, uh, Reagan <coughs> went there. 
for the inauguration of that uh, steel mill. But I hope you will not lose. <coughs> uh, uh, years ago, we talked about uh, hollowing out of industries. But I think your basic, <coughs> I hope your basic industry will remain strong. I mean, including your auto industry and uh, parts and component uh, manufacturers also. The defense of the NATO nations or NATO uh, reflects what Japan and Moscow said we do it compared to taxpayer of the United States? Actually, <coughs> uh, uh, several years ago, J Japanese government agreed to pick up more of the defense cost <coughs> of, the, I mean, the cost of uh, having American troops uh, ba based in Japan. And, and I think we nowadays pick up uh, uh, the, the cost of <coughs> all Japanese uh, I mean, uh, payroll of all the Japanese employees hired by the U.S. military <coughs> in Japan. Uh, I think housing cost <coughs> and things of this kind, and that amount per soldier per airman, U.S. airman, uh, is higher than <coughs> in, uh, the the, uh, the cost that uh, <coughs> uh, which is the tab which is being picked up by any of the NATO countries. So I think maybe half half the cost of uh, having U.S. troops based in Japan is being picked up <coughs> by, by the Japanese government. Do you think you still need NATO troops there or troops in the United States in Japan? I think, I think <coughs> the gradually U.S. forces stationed in Japan will be reduced. I think <coughs> already, I think U.S. troops based in Korea is being, that was already announced. But uh, perhaps I think the number of maybe the, somebody told me there are 60,000 uh, U.S. <coughs> uh, forces, uh, you know, airmen and uh, navy <coughs> uh, and uh, army uh, being based uh, in Japan. But perhaps that number could be reduced. I don't know. But uh, we still, you know, so. Uh, Philippines <coughs> gave up uh, the U.S. Uh, naval base, Subic Bay, and uh, Clark Air, Air Force Base in the Philippines uh, was had to be abandoned because of the eruption of that uh, Pinatubo. Pinatubo. Yeah, and uh, so I think <coughs> U.S. troops would need some kind of base. I think in Japan, Air Force Base. Uh, or maybe naval port. Could you comment on what you see as far as the future relationship between Japan and China and China and the world order is concerned? Uh, you know, I, I also realize that the U.S. <coughs> is, uh, is currently having a bit of difficult uh, relationship with, uh, with China uh, after the Tianjin <coughs> incident because of human rights issues involved. But uh, I think <coughs> uh, Japan is maintaining very uh, cordial relations with China. We had our emperor visit <coughs> China just uh, a week or so ago. And uh, although em our emperor had to apologize to the Chinese people that, uh <coughs> you know, during wartime, Japanese army invaded China <coughs> and uh, killed so many, uh, even civilian populace. And, uh, uh, but I think, <coughs> I think Japan can maintain cordial relations, will probably can give certain economic aid. Uh, and, uh, but I, I also would like to see <coughs> we, we, Japan, do this in collaboration with U.S. Uh, companies. Do you have any more information on the status of the northern islands, uh, northern islands uh, in Russia? No, I do not. <coughs> uh, 
Well, of course, when Gorbachev came to Japan the last time, <coughs> there was great expectation that uh, he would make certain concessions, but uh, that did not happen. Of course, his posi position <coughs> within the uh, within Russia was uh, being weakened by, by, by Yeltsin. <coughs> but uh, Yeltsin is also uh, concerned about the economic <coughs> health uh, of, uh, of Russia. <coughs> and uh, I don't think he is inclined toward returning even two of the four Northern Islands to Japan. Uh, but <coughs> of course, of course, Yel Yeltsin would like to see seek uh, Japanese economic aid. Eh? But uh, Japanese government <coughs> uh, seems to be linking. You know, uh, if we Japan gives <coughs> Soviet Union, uh, I mean Russia, some kind of economic aid package, then in return we want the <laughs> some islands <laughs> back. But it's not going to work work uh, that way. I don't. I'm afraid. How would you assess uh, Japanese policies in terms of environmental issues? Actually, <coughs> uh, because of the public opinion prevailing dur e even during the 70s, and uh, <coughs> uh, for example, Japanese industries, especially the auto industry, had to comply with the the very strict uh, exhaust emission control standards <coughs> that was introduced in Japan, I believe, 1973, based on the so-called Muskie uh, standards. And, and the basis of Muskie standards, as I understood it, <coughs> was that uh, somebody, an uh, amateur, measured the exhaust emission uh, on a busy street in Chicago. <coughs> and and uh, Senator Edmund Muskie uh, put it in the uh, exhaust emission control <coughs> standard bill. And uh, uh, so Japanese automakers have had to comply. You know, initially the Japanese auto industry would say, oh, we, we just cannot produce cars that can meet that kind of standard. <coughs> but we did it. And uh, as a result, the air over Tokyo and uh, you know, or Osaka or other metropolis <coughs> has become very clean. In the meantime, uh, from stationary sources also, uh, or smoke, <coughs> industrial smoke, uh, we have put in a very strict uh, local uh, regulations. And as a result, <coughs> the air, I think, uh, over, to over Japan is now relatively clean. Uh, we are now concerned about the destruction of ozone layer. <coughs> uh, this, uh, what you might call it, you put in in the air conditioning system. Uh, <laughs> Chloral. <laughs> I can never pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is now quickly being replaced uh, by something else. <coughs> what you put in also in the aerosol cans also is being replaced. Uh, I think Japanese industry has really <coughs> bent backwards to comply with strict uh, exhaust emission control. And, uh, and in, in the meantime, this also produced uh, new technologies and companies that would <coughs> make uh, waste treatment uh, uh, system or things of this kind. In fact, I'm now being asked to become consultant to a Nashville-based uh, four-year-old company called Natural Resources Technology <coughs> uh, Company, NRT. Two professors at the Vanderbilt came up with, with very ingenious waste treatment <coughs> equipment. There are five key equipment uh, <coughs> in, in, in that they invented. And uh, they have just licensed a Japanese manufacturer and uh, also a trading company for marketing <coughs> in Japan. And uh, new waste treatment facilities being built based on their technology 
in Columbus, Ohio, and Cleveland, Ohio. And I'm, I'm being asked to go see them <coughs> and become consultant to this company also. Because there is a great deal of market for such equipment in Japan. That's U.S. technology. <coughs> I know somebody will ask me that question. <laughs> uh, <coughs> of course, there has been some talk <coughs> among some Asian countries of forming Asian trade bloc also, including Japan. But uh, <coughs> I think Japan has taken the position that, uh, of course, during, during the last war, Japan tried to create uh, greater Asian called prosperity sphere. And, and uh, our Asian neighbors uh, read in some ways <coughs> leery about Japan uh, forming the Asian uh, trade bloc. Uh, also, <coughs> in some ways, I think uh, forming regional trading blocs such as NAFTA <coughs> is against the principles of GATT well, the European community in some ways is the same, I think. <coughs> but uh, as I see it, more American companies, including big streets of Detroit, would establish more manufacturing facilities, for example, in Mexico, <coughs> where the labor cost is lower. And I don't know how this <coughs> will contribute to the the creation or loss <coughs> of jobs here in America. You know, uh, I, I'm, I'm a little bit against <coughs> big multinational corporations, American or Japanese, farming out uh, their work uh, overseas where the labor cost is much lower. I think that would ten tend to take your jobs away. Uh, but there may be freer, <coughs> freer trade uh, between U.S. and Mexico and Canada, too. Could the labor costs here in the United States and Japan be comparable now? The yes, over, over the years, uh, <coughs> Japanese labor cost has, has really gone up. Uh, perhaps <coughs> to the, the, uh, the level of advanced European countries. Maybe, but, but then perhaps in Germany, labor cost is probably higher <coughs> than in, in Japan. But compared to U.S. labor costs, uh, there should not be that much difference now. But perhaps I think U.S. is still labor cost is higher. Excuse me, which company? Nissan. Oh, Nissan, yes. Uh, are they also going outside uh, for uh, supplies and so on to cut down the cost since they are high? Well, <coughs> uh, Nissan appointed a new president <coughs> in June of uh, this year. And he, <coughs> the man who moved up to chairman is Mr. Kume. Now, both <coughs> are both rose through the ranks of manufacturing. And the uh, new president, Suji, has had no marketing experience. Where Nissan has been weak <coughs> is in marketing. And, and I'm, I'm, afraid, <coughs> I'm afraid it will take Nissan a long time to become more of a market-oriented <coughs> company. And, uh, Nissan, in fact, in internationalizing <coughs> the company uh, in the U.S. or in, in Europe, always <coughs> elevated to the position of the importance of the lo local nationals. And the Japanese all went back to Japan. <laughs> and and uh, uh, there, I, I'm afraid, I mean, even Nissan USA in Los Angeles is now headed by an ex Ford man. <coughs> and uh, it, 
in marketing Nissan, in North America, Nissan has been very, very weak <coughs> compared to Toyota and Honda. In Europe, only because in England, Nissan <coughs> sells, outsells Toyota and anybody else. Uh, Nissan is still the number one Japanese automaker in Europe. But, uh, of course, I was in charge of Nissan's entire European operation until 1986. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take one more question. Yes, what, what I think is that Japan is not playing bigger political role, <coughs> I mean, befitting its economic uh, strength. That's what I, I, I want to say. But uh, uh, Japanese <coughs> prime ministers, I mean, uh, uh, past prime ministers, never had the international experience. Of course, <coughs> the, the only prime minister that uh, we have had who was very articulate <coughs> internationally it was Nagasone, but uh, he is no longer a prime minister. Perhaps when a younger generation prime minister is named after Miyazawa, perhaps he can play <coughs> a little bigger international role. But we can, we can never provide the kind of leadership that the US <coughs> president has, has played in international affairs. <laughs>